Okay, so you've probably seen this diagram before. So that's a pretty common way of illustrating the idea that change and growth happens outside your comfort zone, so that's where you need to frequently push yourself if you want to learn and grow as a person. What you might not have seen is this diagram. And that version points out that at a certain point outside of your comfort zone, you enter the panic zone, which is the point that you feel swamped and overwhelmed and unable to deal with the task in front of you correctly. And so I think it's pretty obvious that you don't actually want to be here, but I think a lot of people end up in the panic zone by accident because of the way they think they should be practicing. And so in this video, I'm going to talk a little bit about why it's so important to stay in the learning zone, and then I'm going to talk about strategies for getting there and staying there. And I'm going to try and explain it with reference to both piano and Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, not just because I've practiced both of those skills a lot, but because even though they kind of feel diametrically opposed, there are actually a lot of commonalities between them and the ways I think you should practice in them. Okay, so before we start, think about how you learn to read English. Nobody starts with Wolf Won't Bite and then moves on to Shakespeare. They read hundreds or thousands of easier words and sentences and then slowly move on to the harder stuff. Language teachers call this comprehensible input, and it's how you learn quickly when you learn as a child. You're regularly exposed to words and grammar that might be a level above what you can comfortably understand, but even though you might not know every single word, you gravitate towards natural learning strategies such as guessing words from context and inferring meaning. And that works exactly the same with piano and Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. Look at this. Or this. Chances are, unless you're pretty familiar with either of those skills, you have absolutely no idea what's going on in either of those things, and any effort to understand it is just going to kind of confuse and frighten you, and that is ultimately going to hinder your learning. The problem when you're learning as an adult is that you want to get to the good stuff quick. You don't want to be reading C-Spot Run, you want to be reading Shakespeare, so you think you're going to jump straight into that but ultimately that is going to hinder your process and make it a lot slower for you to get to the fun stuff. So how do you give yourself comprehensible input and stay in the learning zone? This is how. Make it easy, but make it challenging. Okay, this might not make sense the first time you hear it, but it's really important. It is easier to make an easy thing challenging than it is to make a hard thing easy. So what I mean by that is that if you fight a brown belt in Brazilian Jiu Jitsu when you're a white belt or a blue belt, there is almost nothing you can do to control how that role goes. Maybe he's going to be nice to you or maybe he's going to smash you but ultimately it is up to him what positions you end up in and you are going to end up in the positions he wants attacking or defending the stuff he wants to attack or defend with very little input from you. So when I started training at Roger Gracie's academy it took me like six months to get into the advanced class which was three stripe blue belts and above and I was like yeah advanced class baby and then I just got smashed for about six months and honestly I think that might have hindered my progress a little bit because I basically never got to attack submissions. I was on the defensive, defensive, defensive almost the whole time because everyone was so much better than me. And ultimately, it can be a lot better for your progress to roll with people who are worse than you so that you can kind of work your attack and your defense. Similarly, you can brute force your way through learning all the notes for Mozart's Ronda a la Turca as like a first year beginner. And that is something I know because I have tried it. But the problem is you're going to be struggling so hard just to keep up with the notes and play them at tempo that you're never going to have time to practice like the dynamics or the pedal or any of the stuff that really makes it sound like the beautiful piece it is. You're just throwing yourself at it over and over and over again rather than learning it in a structured way and using it to further your overall progression. You aren't in control, you are trying to hang on and you are in the panic zone. So now compare and contrast those experiences to how you feel if you choose a challenge that's actually slightly below your comfort level. So as a Brazilian Jiu Jitsu brown belt, I can get a great roll against white belts by intentionally putting myself in bad positions, putting myself in positions where I don't fully understand what's going on as well as that white belt who specializes in that position might. I can put myself in like submissions that I then need to escape from and ultimately I control the direction of the role. Similarly in piano if I practice a piece that's actually slightly below my level I can really concentrate on nailing all the stuff that makes it sound good. So like the dynamics, the tempo, the pedaling, playing with relaxed fingers and getting all the stuff right that I know I should be focusing on for my overall progress. Now, obviously I'm not saying that you should never challenge yourself. You should be playing pieces that are outside your comfort zone and obviously you should be sparring against people who are better than you. But what I'm saying is that you should not be throwing yourself at challenges that are way above your level too early because it will not help, it will hinder you. Chunk it down. So one of the best ways to avoid freaking out when you're doing a new task is to break it into really manageable chunks. This is actually very simple when you're playing piano. You just take like anywhere between about one and four measures of music at a time, practice them with one hand at a time until you're really confident with them, 
work them hands together, then move on to the next four chunks, then probably overlap the chunks so you're practicing the transitions. And that's how I build up almost every piece I play. In jiu-jitsu, it's slightly more difficult, but one of the best ways to do it is through positional sparring. So rather than doing full-on sparring where you could like roll around and end up in any number of positions where you don't really know what's going on, you start in a position like mount or guard or half guard or side mount or whatever and you repeatedly roll from that position resetting every time you get to like a win for either person. What this means is that over the course of a five minute roll you get the chance to prioritize the same sort of sequence of moves and attacks again and again rather than having to come up with answers for like 20 different situations. So you can really bear down on your like weaknesses and it also means that you can try stuff without necessarily worrying that if you mess it up you're going to end up on the bottom getting smashed. Again it's about breaking down the skill in manageable pieces so you can put it back together later. All out sparring and playing full pieces is great fun but it's not what makes you better the most efficiently. Use anchors. Okay this one's super simple and it basically means having things that anchor you back to previous performances so that you don't freak out when things are going badly. It's about reminding yourself that you've faced challenges before and been successful so you can do it again. Now there are a bunch of different ways to do this. One simple one is to write things down. So for instance I have a spreadsheet where I keep track of all the piano pieces I've learned even if some of them aren't like performance ready right now I can go back to that and remind myself that I was able to like do all these pieces like work on a tricky bit of syncopation do a very difficult bit of fingering or a difficult run and that at one point I simply could not do those things and now I can and there are still times I freak out on piano like there is a section in maple leaf rag where I was just going I just can't do this my brain just can't do this and then I looked at something I'd done that was like difficult I think it was in the theme from up and I was like oh yeah no this was this seemed impossible at the time too and then I went and did it. I just did it 300 times and then I did it. So that definitely works but the single best thing I've seen for this is video. Now even as a Brazilian jiu-jitsu brown belt I have days where I'm like man have I really learned anything over the past like decade of doing this? I still suck. I'm still getting smashed sometimes. What is going wrong here? And what fixes that is I go back and look at old videos. Look at this video. So you can see this full thing elsewhere on my channel, but in a nutshell, it is me getting walloped by a Commonwealth Games winning judo gold medalist called Craig Ewers uh, when I was fighting at Blue Belt. And like, there's really no shame in getting smashed by a professional judoka, but also I am doing a ton of things wrong in that video. I like, my arms are out of position. I'm trying to bridge from the wrong place. It's just awful. I look back into stuff like that and I go, oh yeah, I can see that I used to be bad and now I've fixed it and I can make further progress from this point. Use video, use anchors, remind yourself that you've faced challenges before and you can do it again. Get a good teacher. I'm gonna throw this one in at the end because even though I haven't got a piano teacher yet, I'm certainly gonna get one because I've seen the value of good teachers in a ton of different spheres. In his book, Peak, Anders Ericsson puts it this way. A good coach provides individualized feedback and designs training activities that target specific areas. They hold the roadmap that guide the student through an evolving training regime that hones skills in a specific order. Certain skills can only be taught and practiced once others have been mastered. So basically, in any activity that's well understood, and piano and Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu are certainly getting there, a really good coach will know more than you about how to design a training regime that will keep you nicely, safely in your learning zone, very rarely straying outside of it, and making you progress as fast as you can. You might not have the money or the resources to invest in one right now, but it's certainly something to aim towards. And that is my best advice on staying in the learning zone. Remember, don't just smash yourself against difficult challenges again and again. This is not a no pain, no gain thing. Taking on things that are too difficult is not gonna benefit you over the long run. Stay in the learning zone, keep learning, keep practicing, go learn.